Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how I created this flower frame in Scan and Cut Canvas, complete with the wavy lines. Once I'd made this frame in Scan and Cut Canvas, I resized it down ever so slightly to four and a half inches square. And then I took a piece of A4 white card, cut it down to five inches by ten, which gave, gave me a five by five card. And this four and a half inch frame sits neatly now on the front of this card with a quarter inch border all the way around. I also cut a couple of extra flowers in a contrasting piece of card and I've 3D'd those onto the front of the frame. So I hope you like the project and I'll show you how I created it in Scan and Cut Canvas. Okay, so I'm in Scan and Cut Canvas and the first thing I'm going to do is open my flower project which I've already got saved within my projects here but this flower started off as a dingbat I'm going to show you how to create it so you need the Brother Scan and Cut type converter which I'm going to open and you need the font installed on your computer already and the font is called Seru's Flower Ding. If you're a subscriber to my channel or you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I use this font quite a lot. I'm just going to find it here. So here it is, Seru's Flower Ding. And I got it from dafont.com. Now the letter that I want to use to create this flower is a capital letter A. So I'm just going to hold the shift key down and type an A and I'm going to choose Seru's flower ding and instantly that gives me the flower. I can preview it so it's there and I'm going to say save and I'm just going to put it on my desktop. As I say I've already got it in my projects but this is what you would do if you haven't got a file already made. So I'm going to come to the SVG icon and I'm going to go and look for that file I've just created on my desktop and I'm going to double click to select it or you can click choose and I'm going to say OK and that brings the flower on and I'll zoom in so you can see it. So this is the basic flower that we're going to use. So I'm just going to come back to fit to mat. It's just about an inch high and wide. I'm just going to make it slightly bigger. We can always make it smaller. So <clears throat> I need a few copies of this and I also want to create like a frame of it as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is while it's selected, right click and hit duplicate. So I've got another one. And then I am going to make an offset of this flower to make a flower frame. So with it selected, I'm going to come to edit, offset. I'm going to take the offset down to about 12 I'm going to say outward and I'm going to leave create an offset line only around the outer edge because that's all I want I want an offset to go around the outside of the flower and I'm going to say okay now if you select in the middle it will show you the bounding box around the outside so that means that the bigger flower is on the top and we want it to go to the bottom so that we can do the next process so I'm going to right click and click send to back and then when I click in the middle again that selects the middle flower so I now know that the smaller flower is the one on top and the offset flower is the one behind. So I'm going to drag an imaginary box around both and with them both selected I'm going to go to edit and subtract and it doesn't look as though it's any different but what I'm going to do I'm going to fill them in with colour just to show you. So I'm going to fill that one in with black and I'm going to fill this one in with black and you'll see the difference. So this one is solid and this one is like a frame. So if I put that, I'll make this one red. So if I put this one over that, you'll see red through it. So you can see this one is hollow. It's like a frame. OK, so now I'm going to make my frame. So I'm going to come to the basic shapes. I'm going to get a square. I'm going to leave it as it is at the moment for the default. I'm going to come to edit, create offset. I want an offset of about half an inch. So I'm going to take it up to 0 0.52 outward and around the outside edge only. And I'm going to make, make it a bevel because I want the edges 
angular rather than rounded. So I'm going to say OK. Again, I'm just going to select in the middle somewhere and that shows me that the bounding box is around the outer square. So I know that's on top and it has to be behind to do the subtract. So I'm going to go right, centre back, click in the middle again and the middle ones, this one, smaller one selected now. So I know that's on top. I'm going to select both and go edit, subtract, and now I've got my frame. So I'm starting to get my elements. So the next thing that I want to do, I'll just close that down, close that down to give me a bit more room. I want to now create my wavy line. So I'm going to come to the path icon. I'm going to click once, click and drag. So I kind of get this and let go. So I kind of get this like piece of string that's following me. Click and then click and drag again. So I get the next piece of string and go this way and double click to let go. Now it's not looking great, is it? But let's just have a look at it. We'll zoom in and see what we can do with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is double click to select the nodes. So I want to move this node to take it up there. So I'm just going to manipulate these nodes to try and get this into more of a curve. So I'm going to select this one and bring it out. I'm going to arch this up a bit and you can use the handles to adjust the curve. I'm going to bring this one down and again I'm going to use the handles to get this kind of sweeping curve. And then I'm just going to bring this one in a bit. Might have to just readjust these handles to get me a kind of a sweeping curve. Now this one I'm going to move a bit more and then click away to see how we're looking. So it's starting to get a dip. This one's still not quite right so just going to angle it Right, so I've just double clicked on this end node and it's selected this and this part is a straight line and I want to make it a curve. So I'm going to select curve, which will give me handles, hopefully. I'm going to double click again and I'm going to add a node into here. And then I'm going to select this section and make that a curve so that I can bend this down a bit more and then I'm going to select this node which selects this bit and I'm going to make this a curve and that will hopefully give me the curve that I want. And again I can just move the nodes around so let's have a look at that. So we'll click away and have a look. Right, so I'm going to go back to view and fit to map. So again, it's not looking great, but it's looking okay. So with it selected, we're going to go to edit, offset. I'm going to create an offset of about 0 0.8 and say, um, leave, leave this one ticked and say round and say okay. And then I'm going to select the offset and bring it away. So that's given us a bit more of a wavy line. So this one I don't really need but I'm going to just put off the page for now. So with this one selected I'm going to create a few duplicates 
and then I'm just going to start to position these. I'm going to use the drag arrow to rotate and what you need to have is you need to have an overlap here on the frame and an overlap here. You don't want bits that are not touching. So that's the first one I'm going to put in. Then this one, I think I might rotate round completely and position this one. And I'm going to drag it out to make it bigger. In fact, I'm not. I'm going to undo that and this one I'm going to position down at the bottom but I think I might try and flip it so we'll go to edit and flip horizontal which is this one there you go so now I'm going to angle that and position that so it overlaps this part of the frame and this part of the frame and then I'm going to start to put some flowers in. So I'm going to create duplicates. So I'm just clicking right click and create duplicate. And I'm going to do the same with this one. Don't know how many I'm going to need, but it, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to get another line. Drag this one out. Going to bring in another flower and position this one here so it overlaps this line and the frame. I think I'll put another one down at the bottom so this one's going to overlap the wavy line and the edge of the frame. I'm going to put this one in here. I want it to touch the frame and the wavy line, so I'm going to select the wavy line and bring that down a bit more. And then I think I need another wavy line putting in here, but I think I'm going to rotate it and bring it in and drag it out a bit. So it's touching this flower and this frame. Might need to angle it a bit more. And drag it out. So it's touching the flower, it's overlapping the frame and I think it's touching the flower here. And then I'm just going to fill in with a few more of these flowers and see how we're looking. This one I'm going to make smaller and I'm going to rotate it so that it's overlapping the wavy lines. And I think I might leave it at that. I'll just bring all these elements back onto the page for now. So if I zoom in on here so you can get a closer look, so you'll see that this wavy line overlaps the frame here and here, and this flower is touching both that and this. So they're all touching at some point. So I'm going to drag an imaginary box around everything, and I'm going to go to Edit and Weld. And if it doesn't work, you can always hit the Undo button. So they look as though they're all touching now and all welded. So that's my frame and that's how I made the front of the card. So if I go back to edit, fit to mat, you'll see that's my frame made from a basic flower ding and just a path line that I drew using the path tool and manipulated with the nodes. So I hope you found that helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.